Hi guys, welcome to this video which is going to explain what happens to reactivity as you go down group 7. If we start off looking at the electronic configuration then, so I'm going to use fluorine. As you can see here, fluorine has got 7 electrons in the outer shell. It's in group 7, therefore it wants to gain 1 electron to get a full outer shell and to become part of a stable compound. And the beauty is this is the same for every single element in group 7. So all group 7 elements, the halogens, want to gain one electron to get a full outer shell. So you should realise then that reactivity decreases as you go down group 7, exactly the opposite of group 1. And the explanation is very similar to that of the group 1 elements. So when you start off the explanation, there are more shells of electrons. And because of that, the outer shell gets further away from the nucleus. Remember it's really important to say the outer shell, don't just say the electrons get further away from the nucleus. Because they're further away from the nucleus, there is a weak force of attraction, or the force of attraction gets weaker between the nucleus and that outer electron, or outer shell. There is also more electron shielding, because there are more shells and more electrons getting in the way of that outer electron, that outer shell. Now here's the difference between group 1 and group 7. Group 1 wants to lose an outer electron, but group 7 wants to gain it. Therefore, because that force of attraction is weaker, it is harder to gain an electron, which makes it less reactive. Therefore, reactivity decreases as you go down group 7. And that's really all there is to it. So let's see what the examiners can ask. I've got a four mark question for you then, which is bringing together everything we've just talked about. It says, explain using your knowledge of electronic configuration why reactivity decreases as you go down group seven. So four marks, you need to say four things. Think through what we've just talked about in this video, about the number of shells, about the force of attraction, get it down onto paper and we'll see how you've done it in a minute. Right, let's go through. So. As you go down the group, the first thing to talk about is the number of shells, as I mentioned. It increases. There are more shells. That gets you your first mark. If there are more shells, what happens to that outer shell, or the outer electrons? They get further away from the nucleus. I've put positive in there because it's really important to say your electron is negative, your nucleus is positive because it's got protons in. And then you can talk about the fact there's more electron shielding, so more electrons getting in the way, weakening that force of attraction which is the fourth marking point, so the force of attraction between, again, the outer electron and the nucleus is weaker. And then your final marking point is saying it is harder to gain the outer electron to fill your outer shell. That's all there is to it. Any four of those five marking points would have got you four out of four. And I have got a quick review question for you, and that is explain why reactivity increases as you go down group one, but decreases when you go down group seven. So your explanation for both is going to be pretty much identical, and then it's just that final little bit about gaining or losing electrons. I will put a link up in the top right-hand corner about the alkali metals if you can't remember, but it should be fairly straightforward for you now. That brings this video to an end. Hi guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click on like down below. You can have a look at my latest video up there. You can also have a look at my website if you haven't seen it before, and you can click on subscribe down below. Bye now.